ஒரேஷன் <laughs> Dr. T. Rajasekhar sir uh, and Dr. T. B. Rajmurugan sir. Uh, first of all, uh, I introduce our Dr. T. Rajasekhar sir, Professor and Deputy Head in uh, the area of uh, Specialization in Mechanical Engineering, the Department of Mechanical Engineering, SRM Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, is, He has uh, got several publications which are highly indexed and uh, involved in various administrative activities. And he, uh, he has uh, uh, filed a patent on the composite materials with natural fibers. Uh, and uh, with this uh, introduction, I welcome you, sir, for this uh, conference. Yes, thank you for welcoming. Uh, and also, I'm happy to welcome uh, one more chairperson for this session, so Dr. T.V. Raj. Uh, வெல்கம் <laughs> 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 Uh, let us move to the session now uh, by uh, power point sir sir i call the participants to present you are writing okay. first and uh, a comparative study of metallurgical and machinery characteristics of boronais uh, of uh, atal uh, shankar emeros hmm Sankar, Sankar Amaros, you may start your presentation. I request you to kindly share your, uh, your point. <clears throat> Presenters, authors, as scholars are requested to kindly make your presentation, present your uh, 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 work, work <coughs> in about 10 minutes of your time. and allow me us to interact for 2 minutes if you allow us to interact for uh, for a couple of minutes it will be a good input for for, for you uh, whether you are a ug student or pg student or research scholar right uh, please allow us to interact with you so that to get some inputs which will help you to get your work done completely successfully yes sarkar is time is with you அரசு அவர் இல்லனா வேற யாரா கூப்பிடுங்க உட்கார பாருங்க இஃப் சங்கர் இஸ் நாட் ஹியர் யூ கேன் இன்வைட் சம்படி எல்ஸ் ஓகே ஓகே யா யூ கேன் இன்வைட் தோஸ் ஹூ ஆர் அவேலபிள் அண்ட் மேபி தே மே தே மே திங்க் இட் இஸ் 2 to 4 தே மே ஜாயின் லேட் அண்ட் தோஸ் ஹூ ஆர் அவேலபிள் லெட் மீ சென்ட் அண்ட் லெட் us give some input ஆ ப்ளீஸ் பார்ட்டிசிபேட் அன்மியூட் யுவர்செல்ஃப் 
they have to unmute and they should uh, present their uh, powerpoint yeah how many participants sir, are available sir good afternoon sir shall i present yes sir in what is your name sir now இன்ஜினியரிங் <laughs> Builders Engineering College, Kanjayam. Uh, my uh, co-author is Dr. P. Govind Swami, sir, Professor and the Head, Department of Mechatronics Engineering, Dr. Madalingam College of Engineering and Technology, Pollachi. Yes. Uh, outline of the presentation. Uh, first introduction. Abstract, Literature Review, Materials and Methods, Result and Distance. And finally, Conclusion. Introduction. Okay. Composites. What is composites? The composite metals are frequently used in all the areas where we are in the need of less weight, high strength, good thermal resistance, fracture toughness, and easy fabrication. Sir. So, conventional materials like metals and woods are replaced by composite materials for their uh, superior properties. Sir. Upstart. The natural fiber composites are accepted as the matcher major resource in industrial relevance because of their properties like light good strength and biodegradability uh, here we selected the acacia and cactus fibers are available in uh, large and have high cellulose which is reasonable for polymer matrix composite the acacia and cactus fibers are extracted and experimentally determined the density diameter chemical compositions tensile strength and surface morphology in this study the 6% of nvoj treated acacia and cactus fibers achieved better tensile strength when compared with uh, untreated fibers then the fourier transformer infrared spectroscopy ftir was made and observed that the functional group were presented in both treated and untreated fibers uh, finally the morphology study was made by scanning electron microscope to identify the impurities on the untreated fiber surface and surface modification in the treated fibers then literature review <clears throat> the usage of fiber filled with polymer matrix composite materials are rapidly rising mainly due to their lower cost of production and enable properties the biodegradability of cellulosic fibers is associated with physical chemical mechanical and thermal and also the moisture conditions which has increased its scope for use of and several applications uh, generally the natural plant fiber properties mostly depend on chemical compounds and formations and also related to fiber wearing as well as growing conditions fiber extraction process tar wasting sections and chemical treatment methods mm. The natural fibers are considering as chemical constructions like cellulosic, chemicellulose, wax, moisture, content, etc. The main limitations of natural fiber is its hydrophilic nature, which resists the use of the fibers as reinforcement in polymer matrix composites. The result shows the poor interfacial bonding between the matrix and the fibers. So, 
improvement is found in the interfacial bonding between the fiber and mat due to the chemical treatments of fibers which reduce the hydrophilicity fiber surface cleanliness reduce the moisture absorption process and improve the surface roughness so only we are going to uh, do the uh, nao treatments then materials and methods first process extraction of fibers alkyl treatment of fibers experimental methods extraction of fibers the acacia cellulose fibers were extracted from the part of acacia arabica tree by digitization process the same thing the catas cellulose fibers was extracted from the stem of pencil catas plant by digitization process the acacia part and catas stems were cutted and netted in water for 8 to 10 days after that the netted parts and cutted stems are washed in running water and fibers were removed from parts and stems and dried in the room temperature for 3 days finally we collect the uh, fibers next alkyl treatment of fibers the dry acacia and catas fibers were kept under the alkyl treatment to improve the surface roughness the fibers treated with 6% sodium dioxide solution at room temperature for 24 hours with distilled water after that the treated acacia and catas fibers were washed with running water and dried in room temperature for 3 uh, days after that the treated the treatment removed the impurity like chemicals legend etc for better properties then experiment methods first one physical properties in that uh, fiber density the water displacement method was intended to find the density of the acacia and catas treated and untreated fibers the density measurements was carried out independently and the experiment was repeated for five times for the precision of the results and then fiber diameter the diameter of uh, uh, both fibers were measured by a profile projector a digital type at a 28th magnification with 1 micron accuracy the enlarged fiber pro profile is projected in and the average fiber treatment is taken from the 25 samples so next chemical properties the various chemical processes are used to identify a chemical compositions of treated and untreated acacia and catas fibers the chemical compositions like cellulose hemicellulose resin ash mulch tannant also wax then for the transformer in infrared spectroscopy ftar the ftar spectroscope of acacia and catas fibers are performed using pegin elmer spectrum this spectrum was observed in the range of 400 to 4000 cm then uh, mechanical properties single fiber tensile test the single fiber tensile test was measured by using the instant universe testing machine according to the asm standard the gauge length of each catas and acacia treated and untreated continuous fibers were taken as 100 mm then scanning electron microscope of the fiber the surface of the acacia and catas treated and untreated fibers were observed directly by scanning electron microscope by the, the test was studied under the surface structure of the fibers resultant discussion Uh, in that characterization of acacia and uh, catas fibers uh, in that physical properties chemical properties mechanical properties and also finally scanning electron microscope of the fibers was analyzed first one physical properties of uh, both fibers uh, fiber density the alkyl treatment removed the impurities in the fiber surface uh, the den the density of the acacia and catas treated fibers was increased 1.43 percentage and 1.34 percentage respectively then the untreated fibers acacia catas fibers conform with less density than the synthetic fibers so and it is used for reinforcement composite material for lightweight structures fiber diameter the average value of the acacia and catas fiber diameters were measured for the 25 samples from this results it's found that the diameter of treated are smaller than the untreated fibers due to the removal of impurities in the alkyl treatments uh, the table shows the average diameter average diameter slightly changes between the acacia uh, treated fiber and also the no, untreated fibers fiber weight distribution uh, the fourth by fibers were weighted using electron weighing apparatus uh, the 
for a different length from the 50 mm to 200 mm here also shows the acacia uh, fibers and also treated acacia fibers varies 0.05 uh, mm difference so 0 0.005 gram difference chemical properties of acacia and catas fibers uh, treating cellulosic fibers in an alkaline solution in order to remove waxy content impurities and natural oils covering the external surface of the fiber cell wall cellulosic hemicellulosic ligand and wax wax and moisture content are better in the alkali treated fibers uh, 5% to 15% were improved in the all the aspects compared to the untreated fibers due to the alkali treatment the hemicellulose and other impurities were removed leading to enhance the mechanical properties mechanical and other properties of fibers and also we can find a better improvement in matrix reinforcement composite materials the table shows the chemical constitutions of the acacia and catas fibers ftir ftir analysis done on the treated and untreated acacia and catas fibers using ftir spectrometry identify a few functions group uh, the figure shows the the peak values in the 1000 1500 uh, uh, to 2000 and also the uh, peak value from the 3000 to 3500 the peak value and functional groups from the range 1000 to 1300 the functional groups are co group and the fiber consist of hemicellulose and the cellulose are present uh, from the range 1022 to 1034 uh, functional groups present cellulose cellulose present in the co group uh, from the range 1600 1634 uh, cc aromatic stretching with the length of transgated cc bonded and the band is attributed to the ligand content in the fibers uh, from the peak value 2895 to uh, 2915 the stretching vibration from cg and cg2 band is attributed to wax content present in the fibers from uh, 3200 to 3600 uh, carbolic acid oil is seen due to the presence of cellulose content because of hydrogen bonding between the molecules tensile properties of acacia and catas fibers in the single fiber tensile test was obtained by the average value of cross sectional area in uh, 25 samples in the tensile strength of acacia treated fibers were 7.829 percentage higher than the untreated fibers the treated catas fiber also having higher tensile strength when compared with untreated fibers because of removal of non cellulose substance from cellulose hemicellulose ligand content the tensile strength enhanced in the treated natural fibers attention sakti vidwel sir you can you can rest it your presentation can okay, can quickly complete your presentation in another 2 minutes okay sir okay what okay. the treated yeah, acacia and catas fibers recorded good tensile strength tensile modulus and elongation of the acacia fibers surface morphology of the untreated fibers the surface morphology of the acacia and catas fibers were conducted by sem analysis the sem images exposed the both fibers have multicellular arrangements the impurities like wax hemicellulose and some nodes present on the fiber surface are observed as a white layer the outer surface shows the fiber compact and smoothness that reduce the mechanical and physical properties of that fibers surface of the uh, treated fibers due to alkali treatment the impurities were removed from the sur fiber surface and it is clearly shown in the uh, same image the cleaner outer surface of the fiber is observed with more pores after the alkali treatment some of the fatty and non cellulose content were removed the pores helps to improve the Uh, properties such as wettability and bonding in the lamination process finally conclusion uh, in physical properties the diameter and weight were reduced in the treated acacia and catas fibers because of the removal of impurities and chemicellulose content density of treated acacia and catas fibers were was obtained uh, 1189 kg per meter cube and 898 kg per meter cube respectively which were higher than the untreated fibers the influence of fiber alkali treatment improved the chemical properties the cellulose content result shows 
so that the higher value in treated fibers and also chemical constituents like chemicellulose lignin adds moisture and wax content acknowledged better value than the untreated fibers which is which in turn improved the properties and it is highly suitable for reinforced material in polymer matrix composites the ftir uh, spectrum also confirmed that the removal of impurities like chemicellulose lignin etc in the fiber surface had given better results also a strong hydrogen bond was noticed on alkylated fibers which facilitated better mechanical properties of the fibers the tensile test on acacia and catas fibers revealed that the tensile strength modulus and elongation in alkylated fibers were superior to those of untreated fibers due to the better tensile strength the fiber can effectively used in the industrial applications especially in automobile industries the tensile test results proved the changes in the fiber surface by alkyl treatment the study of surface morphology provided that the image evidence that the outer surface impurities were removed from the acacia and catas fibers on alkyl treatment and also the same image confirmed that the treated fib fiber surface which improved the interfacial characteristics of the fibers in the polymer composites hence acacia and catas plant fibers properties are experimented clearly so that it can be used as a replacement of synthetic fibers thank you thank you sir yeah thank you sakti you went out sakti went thank you for your time and presentation and you should um, the conclusion should be concise and your concise conclusion should be in a single slide you should okay uh, sir you should present your conclusions in single slide some of the uh, key key point key points you should uh, convey to the your subsequent uh, follow your uh, researches what is, know, what, is the, what is what is the novelty or uh, innovation uh, you have identified uh, through your research sir what sir what is your uh, novelty of uh, this fiber sir novelty uh, fiber yeah? both uh, uh, both fibers are the new one okay Acacia arabica is new one. That is the carvelum, the uh, organic carvelum um, uh, tree. So in that in that tree, the, the farmers are take the take the fibers to uh, to pump it to, to lift the weight. Okay, okay. And so, uh, do you have any particular application for these fibers? Uh, maybe the rely on the upon its uh, applications or its so the, uh, properties. So the farmers are using this fiber. the farmers are using this uh, say fibers as the uh, materials for uh, uh, lifting the materials so the, uh, both the fibers are in the investigation as the characterization of the uh, fibers so still i am not did any uh, composite composite plates sir yeah, yeah, fine just so the compare look at it yeah. relatively to other fibers the uh, tensile strength and the chemical properties are uh, equal to the uh, sea cell uh, and also the banana fibers sir And, and how did you get this motivated to the Sakasia and the Kakata fibers? Sir, what, sir? How did you get motivation to get uh, in touch with this uh, new fiber? Sir, uh, uh, I am the I am the background of uh, farmer, sir. So, oh, okay. In, <laughs> you're a police, sir. Sir, sir, sir. 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 Okay, Dr. Sir, thank you very much. I wish you to, to because you have used this uh, fiber based uh, acacia and cactus fibers. I wish you all the best for your work. Thank you very much okay. for, for your time, Dr. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 first slide on the mechanical behavior of concrete good afternoon mm -hmm. good afternoon to all the panel members and for the research scholars who have been presenting their work currently am i audible yeah yeah Hello. yes yes present your ppt yes sir
Yeah, has the PPT uh, seen, sir? Have I shared it properly? Yeah. Yeah, it is coming. Is it to come? I think it is on the way. We share it. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, click on the present now button. Yes, sir, I have done that. Yeah. And see that uh, you are seeing the uh, options. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please so have to come. Sorry. One second, sir. Yeah, by sharing it properly. Uh, Is it seen now? Uh, it's visible now. Okay. Can you start the presentation, sir? Please keep in the uh, presentation. Oh, okay, thank you. Is it visible now, sir? Is it proper? Yeah, uh, visible, visible now. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, so good afternoon to everyone present here, uh, including the chairperson, um, Dr. Raj Shekran, sir. Uh, I have conducted my research based on uh, copper slag, which is an industrial based. Uh, this paper is regarding the me uh, assessing the mechanical behavior of concrete when copper slag is incorporated in the place of uh, river sand, natural river sand. Uh, so my supervisor is Dr. TCH Madhvi, professor and head department of civil engineering, SRM Ayashi Ramapuram. I am a research scholar working under her for the past uh, three and a half to four years uh, under the same topic in copper slag. I've been doing my uh, research work as well. Let me proceed to the work. Uh, as far as the introduction of the topic is concerned, uh, my uh, research work focuses primarily on two aspects. One is to utilize the industrial waste, which has been produced majorly. And the next one is to uh, minimize the uh, utilization or over-utilization of existing natural resources. So the natural resource that we are focused on right now is your natural river. Uh, the issue has come up because it's majorly a natural resource, which is getting depleted with time. Uh, so there is a scarcity of river sand, which has been present. Uh, so in order to find out an alternative, uh, researchers are now conducting extensive research work to look out for alternatives which can be used in the place of natural river sand. So here we've incorporated an industrial base which can be used in the place of uh, your natural resource uh, in concrete as a, a replacement for fine aggregate. Uh, so as far as we know, concrete is the second largest material that has been used. Uh, it has been dated second as far as consumption is concerned. Uh, so based on the depletion of river sand, uh, researchers have been looking out for alternatives and on the other hand we've got industrial waste which have been dumped or disposed of as landfills uh, so instead we thought that our industrial waste can be incorporated as a construction material in uh, your concrete uh, so as far as aggregates are concerned they occupy about a 60 to 75 percentage of the total volume of concrete out of which 45 percentage is the total volume occupied by fine aggregate or your post aggregate both uh, incorporative in concrete uh, so fine aggregate occupies about uh, 45% of the total volume of concrete. Uh, so instead of the conventional fine aggregate, which is a natural river sand, which is getting depleted day by day, we thought of proposing uh, the utilization of your copper slag in your concrete. Uh, so the threat, uh, this is majorly because of illegal sand mining, which is taking place uh, due to um, uh, due to a lo low availability and also due to the increasing in demand, uh, there are uh, several illegal practices which have been uh, undertaken right now by the society uh, in order to uh, minimize uh, uh, in order to minimize uh, requirement. So what they are indulging is they are in indulging into illegal sand mining, where a lot amount of uh, sand is being dredged from the river banks, due to which erosion takes place, and there is also like um, increase in the depth of the river bank, and there are also like a flooding of the nearby regions if in case water is more or uh, there is an increase in water table depth. Uh, so this, uh, these are the, and there is also another disadvantage where uh, turbidity of the water increases due to which uh, the aquatic organisms are put into danger. Hence, uh, we have uh, incorporated a specific industrial waste which can be utilized. Uh, so as far as uh, industrial waste are concerned, we have uh, adopted copper slag, which is nothing but an industrial waste or a byproduct that is produced uh, during the extraction of uh, extracting pure copper metal from its ore. So when the metal is extracted from the ore in uh, specific stages. Uh, such as beneficiation roasting, which we'll be talking about later. At the smelting stage of extracting the pure metal from its ore, a byproduct or a waste is generated as a part of the process. So this uh, waste that has been generated, which has been incorporated in our study, is nothing but your copper slag. So for every pure ton of copper, about 2.2 to 3 tons of copper slag is generated. And across the world, the total copper slag production accounts to about 40 million tons. So this is the amount of uh, slag which is generated as a part of the process where the pure metal is extracted from its ore. So by copper slag is nothing but a waste material. So this can be incorporated in construction uh, construction uh, as a part of your aggregate phase in the concrete. So we'll uh, look into the properties of the material. 
Okay, so let us like first initially talk about the objectives. So the primary objective is to utilize a copper slag, which is an industrial base in concrete, in the place of your conventional fine aggregate. Uh, so the next one is to uh, minimize the utilization of your river sand and also to promote sustainable construction such that uh, the material is available for future generation use. So and the adaptation is also reduced. Uh, such that the material is uh, available intact for uh, further use as well and for further research studies. Uh, so the next one is to compare. So whenever you propose uh, an alternative in the place of the conventional fine aggregate or in the place of conventional uh, raw materials which are being used in concrete, we'll have to first analyze its physical properties and also its chemical constituents. So if in case we find a match between the physical properties and the chemical constituents, and then we can propose that material. And the other uh, two factors which can also be incorporated while uh, deciding a replacement material is about the cost as well as the availability. So availability as far as copper slag is concerned is abundant. You've got 40 million tons which has been generated every year globally so this has got higher scope and also based on cost uh, it is nothing but a waste product which has been generated as a part of the product as a part of the process so there's no much uh, uh, there is no processing required for the material as such next is to evaluate uh, the influence of uh, copper slag in the workability of concrete uh, how far it uh, enables or how far its advantages for the placing as well as the compacting and the next one is to assess the mechanical behavior, which is the core of the uh, paper which has been written right now. Uh, so the three tests have been conducted, which is compression, split tensile, and flexure for various specimens as per codes. Uh, so impact and modulus of velocity is just for scope of future scope. It has not been implemented in the current study. Uh, only compression, split tensile, and flexural strength has been uh, incorporated. Uh, the remaining two have been incorporated for the future studies. And uh, the next one is to study the effect of corpus lag. Um, uh, in uh, the concrete microstructure under scaling electron microscope. So three mixes for uh, uh, 0, 40, as well as 100. Uh, the concrete mixes have been incorporated uh, for which micro microstructural studies have been conducted. Next is to minimize the ill effects of disposal. Uh, so the other objective is to uh, minimize the disposal um, ill effects, uh, which are disadvantages to the society and also to the ecology. Once the industrial waste, which have been uh, removed from the process, have been uh, disposed of as landfills, or uh, the applications are very minimal. Only about 15 to 20 percentage of the uh, copper slag, which is generated, has been incorporated into use, uh, such as for abrasive tools, for uh, cleaning the pavements, as well as uh, for blasting the surfaces. Uh, so uh, these are some of the applications which have been uh, utilized as of now. So for the for incorporating it as a construction material, uh, the usage has been very limited. And uh, there is extensive research which is going on for this material for the past year. But then there are variations which have been recommended. What is the need for study? As far as the need for study is concerned, illegal sand mining is one of the major uh, uh, major parameters for which, due to which, or uh, to minimize uh, demand and also to reduce uh, the overutilization of the existing natural resource and also to promote sustainable construction, uh, we have incorporated an industrial waste. Many industrial waste have been put into use, whereas in our study, based on cost availability as well as the property of the material, which has been incorporated as a replacement, uh, we have conducted studies and then we have uh, uh, like established the feasibility of using copper slag and we also optimize the amount of cont the content or the amount of copper slag that can be put into concrete for major applications. Um, even including structural, which will be done at the future scope. Uh, this is one of the pictures of uh, illegal sand mining, which has been happening uh, throughout India. I'll also give you a district wise utilization. Uh, so these are not the red ones, are nothing but the fines which have been imposed in the different states, and the black ones are nothing but the uh, illegal sand mining, which has been happening throughout India. Uh, so red indicates the fines which have been imposed uh, due to illegal uh, sand mining that has been happening and also due to lack of licenses in many of the sand queries. The fines are being imposed by the government in order to curb the activity. It, despite of all this, the activity is still seen to continue. So in order to put an end or to reduce the illegal activity that has been taking place, we have proposed an alternative. So let me go on to copper sources. Uh, so based on copper ores, uh, copper ores are generally present in two uh, uh, two phases. One is the sulfide ore, and then is the oxide ore. As far as copper slag is uh, copper extraction is concerned, copper is majorly extracted only from the sulfide ore using the pyrometallurgical process. Uh, so, as far as copper slag is concerned, it is produced in the roasting stage. Let me go on to these are the four steps which are uh, which are uh, used for extracting copper metal from its ore. Whereas, as far as copper slag is concerned, which is nothing but a byproduct or a waste which is generated as a part of the process. Most of it is generated only in the roasting as well as the smelting stage. Uh, these are the chemical reactions which are involved uh, where uh, copper slag is generated. Uh, so Q, uh, CuFeS2 is nothing but your calcopyrite, which is a sulfide ore of copper, which uh, by basis of roasting, roasting is nothing but your burning, in which oxygen is always supplied. Uh, this is also added, added along with calcium 
silicon carbonate, which is lime, as well as silicon dioxide, which is uh, silica. So based on addition, um, uh, the slag which is generated is present at the right rightmost bottom, which is nothing but a CaCO3 plus SiO2 gives you CaSiO3, and FeO plus SiO2 gives you FeSiO3. So CaSiO3 is as well as FeSO3 together is nothing but a copper slag. So this is generated basically as a waste particle. Uh, so this generally incorporates uh, various metals out of which iron oxide, alumina, as well as silicon and uh, silica, which is nothing but SiO2, are predominant. And as far as rubber sand is concerned, silica as well as aluminium forms a major chemical constituent, and hence copper slag can be used as a suitable alternative. Uh, getting back to the methodology, uh, first literature review was conducted and uh, many literatures were referred and next was your procuring materials material was tested uh, properties were determined both physical as well as chemical and next was the formulating mixed designs as well as evaluating the mixed proportions and the next one was workability test on all mixes and the other one was determining uh, mechanical properties uh, durability tests were not conducted durability as well as structural tests on beams and columns uh, were majorly for the uh, future scope so these are the works which can be done along with the future uh, next is your result conclusion as well as discussion. And apart from all this, uh, we can, uh, based on the results which have been obtained, uh, guidelines can also be formulated for incorporating copper slag as a part of concrete. Next is your literature review. Most of the literature review which was conducted uh, uh, elaborated uh, the following findings. One is that 40% uh, copper slag can be incorporated in concrete and also like up to 60% copper, copper slag can be incorporated in the place of our uh, columns and beams. And uh, the major reason why copper slag gives you maximum benefit or the byproduct which has been generated from the copper slag, uh, from uh, copper ore production uh, gives you maximum benefit is because of its uh, higher toughness. And uh, this toughness is attributed due to the higher presence of uh, iron oxide, which is nothing but Fe2O3. And apart from this, it is also because of uh, low water absorption and higher specific gravity. Higher specific gravity leads to higher density as well as higher self weight, due to which uh, the endurance uh, when uh, mechanical properties, as far as mechanical properties are concerned, is much higher when compared to the conventional concrete or the normal concrete. Uh, microscopic, uh, microscopic studies were also conducted in which uh, the 40 percent copper slag was, uh, uh, was supposed to be intact. It was uh, it uh, it showed that there was less a number of pores as well as lesser capillary channels uh, for it to. Um, for uh, any external attack also to take place, uh, that was curved. Hence, uh, the microstructure which is formed due to 40% incorporation of copper slag was found to be much denser. So these are the various uh, uh, literatures which have been accumulated as far as 2006, from 2006 until uh, 2020 has been accumulated. And each of them um, have indicated a replacement for both uh, cement as well as uh, 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 river sand in concrete. So for both the binder as well as the conventional fine aggregate. And when it is incorporated in the place of a binder, uh, the amount of carbon dioxide which is released into the atmosphere is curved. And hence, our carbon footprint is a major uh, problem right now. And hence, uh, curbing the amount of carbon dioxide which is uh, emitted into the atmosphere gives you beneficial, um, proves to be beneficial for futuristic research, research trends as well as scope. Uh, this one, uh, this paper elaborates on the utilization of uh, copper slag in the place of cement uh, by uh, four replacements have been considered 0, 5, 10, and 15. And this also emphasizes that uh, based on the increase in toughness as well as uh, a redu reduction in the water absorption as far as copper slag is considered. Uh, so there is an increase in the uh, strength as well as the durability parameters of the resultant concrete. And here, as far as uh, this paper is concerned, it elaborates on the usage of uh, copper slag in columns and up to 80% copper slag has been recommended and it proves to be beneficial and uh, endures uh, maximum axial compression when uh, it was subjected to compression. Uh, this is another paper uh, which was also based on slender columns in which a 60 percent copper slag was encouraged and it also shows that uh, 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 like copper slag uh, endured uh, the, the specimens which incorporated with copper slag when compared to converged to concrete columns it endured the maximum compressive strength when subjected to axial compression uh, these are the various papers which have been elaborated and all of them uh, have uh, produced the following results uh, saying what are the results as far as our literature review is concerned, as I will tell you already, uh, most of it are like a usage Adura, of you may, you may quickly You may quickly proceed to your results and discussion. Uh, yes, sir, sure. Yeah, please. sure, sir, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, let me get to the material properties. Uh, so as far as the material properties are concerned, both the uh, copper slag as well as sand, which has been used in the study, falls in zone 2. And uh, these are the following uh, material properties which have been elaborated. And uh, based on shape, and you may uh, first see the water absorption capacity. So water absorption capacity of copper slag is much lesser, which is only about 50%. Uh, so uh, this is one of the major advantages. It will prove to be beneficial later at the strength stages. And next one is your shape. Uh, copper slag is generally got a granular as well as angular shape. Uh, so this uh, leads to better interlocking of particles within the matrix. 
and reduces the amount of white cellulose capillary channels. Next is a chemical analysis. So as, as I told you, iron oxide silica as well as um, uh, SiO2 as well as uh, alumina and uh, iron oxide are predominantly present apart from calcium, uh, magnesium as well as titanium and other alkalis. Uh, so this indicates an angular, uh, this is a SEM image which is obtained from EDAX analysis and this indicates an angular shape which is also granular in nature for corpus lag. And this one is your uh, peaks of the elements which are present. As I already told you, silica, alumina as well as iron oxide are predominantly present when compared to other elements which are present in the uh, This is nothing with the comparison. I have uh, generally indicated the comparison of uh, both the corpus lag as well as rubber sand. Yes, sir. Uh, these are the various mixed proportions which are used, and the uh, corpus lag values were uh, increased from 0 to 100 uh, for the following proportions. And water cement ratio was kept constant. Uh, these are the uh, three tests which have been conducted compression, split tensile, and structure. Compression was conducted for IS 516 cubes for 7 and 28 days, a split tensile for uh, a uh, 150 by 300 cylinders, and for flexure, it's uh, 700 mm in span, as well as uh, 150 by 150 cross section. So this is a, a result which is obtained for workability. Uh, the workability of copper slag increased with the increase in the content of copper slag in concrete. Uh, so this is majorly because of uh, low water absorption of the material. So as I already told you in material properties, water absorption copper slag is much lesser, only 50%. Hence, uh, there is a lot of free water content which is present in the mix apart from the water which has been utilized for hydration. Uh, so this increases the workability of the mix as far as uh, uh, the uh, incorporation of copper slag is concerned. This is the fixtures for uh, slum cone test which is conducted. Uh, so these are the, the maximum uh, workability was obtained for uh, 100 uh, CS 100 uh, 150 140 mm, whereas a minimum was obtained for uh, the nominal concrete, which is only 25 mm. So the difference majorly is because of the low water absorption of copper slag, which is only half that of the conventional fine aggregate. Mechanical strength test. As far as mechanical strength tests are concerned, uh, the compressive strength obtained, maximum uh, value was obtained for CS40, which is 55.56 Newton per mm square, uh, when compared to the conventional concrete, which is only up to 44.44 uh, Newton per mm square, which is for CS0. Um, and all the other mixes incorporating copper slag perform better when compared to the conventional concrete. And it is like, um, uh, uh, it is also encouraging because the material uh, didn't have any detrimental effect. So the maximum value was obtained for CS40, uh, for both 7 as well as 28 days, in which uh, 28 days uh, strength was 55.56 Newton per mm square. And uh, as far as the conventional mix is concerned, when compared to CE spotty mix, a percentage of increase of about 25.01 percentage was noted. And these are the tests which are conducted for CS, uh, for various CS proportions in the uh, com compression testing machine. And for split tensile strength, similarly, we've obtained the same trend. That is, in CS40, we obtained the 3.38 Newton per mm square of the maximum value obtained at the end of 28 days. And at the end of 28 days, for CS0, it was only about 2.26 Newton per mm square. And you can easily observe that uh, the copper slag mixes, that is, the mixes which have incorporated copper slag, are, um, have exhibited much better uh, results when compared to the conventional concrete. Uh, so for CS50 mix, uh, the maximum value was indicated was about 2.68 Newton per mm square at the end of 28 days. And uh, the percentage increase was about 49.91% uh, when compared to the conventional concrete. And this is a test indication. And the next one is the flexural strength. Flexural strength was considered on, uh, conducted on prisms based on IES 516. And the maximum value of flexural strength was obtained for CS40 mix, which is 7.62 Newton per mm square, in comparison with the conventional concrete, which indicated a value of 5.89 Newton per mm square. Uh, you can easily observe that in the, in, as far as flexural strength is concerned, the value uh, reduces after CS50. This is majorly because of uh, increase in water content due to which a lot of capillary channels as well as a course might be formed in the further structures. These are the uh, tests which is conducted for flexural test of prisms. Uh, as far as discussion is concerned, uh, up to CS40 as well as CS50, all the three tests indicated a higher value when compared to conventional concrete. And it also shows that there is appreciable performance as far as a, a mixes with copper slag is concerned, even in the case of uh, CS100, even up to uh, full replacement, it performed uh, almost similar to that of the conventional concrete. Hence, uh, the incorporation of the material doesn't have any detrimental effect. And this might be because of the higher toughness, higher specific gravity, which might lead to higher density. And also Madhra, because of- during, uh, Madhra, during the presentation, you should try to avoid reading the number of pages and the we should discuss okay, only sir. the graphs and the results. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, so these are the same images which have been uh, utilized. Uh, so as far as C0 is concerned, there are a lot of micro cracks which are present. 
and then CS40, uh, there is a uh, like a, a microstructure is very dense when compared to the other mixes, and hence there were limited micro cracks as well as limited pores which were incorporated. You can, you can take one. You can take one more minute. Yes, sir. Sure. Uh, yeah. CS100 has got a lot of pores as well as uh, indicates a lot of micro uh, capillary channels when compared to the other mixes, and hence, uh, as far as the conclusion is concerned. Uh, this uh, study promotes sustainable construction because we are utilizing an industrial base and uh, a CS40 is a maximum uh, replacement which can be incorporated as far as uh, mechanical properties are concerned. And uh, as far as the microstructure is concerned, uh, the one with CS40 indicates uh, lesser number of pores as well as lesser capillary channels. And hence, uh, this material can be effectively utilized uh, in the study uh, at the place of uh, fine aggregate. That is a conventional fine aggregate, which is your natural river sand, and also increase uh, and also indicates or displays appreciable increase in the uh, all the parameters when compared to the conventional concrete as far as a uh, fifty percent replacement is concerned. Beyond which the te strength tends to decrease. These are the references which were used. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mera, for the presentation. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Suppose if your juniors ask you, yes, sir. What was your uh, understanding or what was your observation from this work? What would be your answer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I might tell them based on mechanical properties, uh, up to fifty percent replacement of copper slag can be utilized, due to which uh, there will be a reduction of fifty percent of the conventional fine aggregate, and uh, this promotes sustainable construction. And apart from that, uh, based on workability, uh, there is an increase in workability as far as copper slag is concerned, due to increase in free water content as far as higher mixes are concerned. And uh, based on microstructure, there is a denser microstructure which is formed when it is replaced up to fifty percent as far as mechanical properties are concerned at the end of twenty eight days. So this indicates. It's a lesser uh, capillary channels as well as lesser voids. Uh, so, uh, based on codes uh, in IS 383, the recent revision that is 2016, only about 25 percent copper slag is recommended. Whereas I have established that about 50 to 60 percent copper slag can be incorporated only based on the mechanical properties. Further structural strength will be uh, enhanced. Uh, even in the case of as per literatures, up to 60 to 70 percent can be utilized. Hence, uh, promoting sustainable construction and to minimize the existing natural resource utilization. Uh, this study can be taken into consideration. No, when you talk about your work, don't refer uh, the literature. Okay, sir. Done. Done, sir. Thank you, Madhura. Thank you very much for your time and sharing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Paula, you can you can invite the next presenter. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. The note is this, Paula. Ah, yes, sir. One second. Just I'll uh, share the screen. Slide show. Sir, are you able to see the slide show? Yeah, it's visible. Yes, one second. Good afternoon to one and all. Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Yes, sir. Uh, so, my topic is on behavior of self compacting concrete with hybrid fibers in hollow beams, presented by myself and guided by. Uh, TCH Madhavi, uh, head of department of SRMST. So first, just we uh, know a small introduction about hollow beams. We know that the iPhone concrete beams have a very he uh, heavy weight in construction material, and consequently there is much loads. So there leads to deeper foundations, and cost also is increased. To overcome this, we need some optimized structural sections, so which reduce weight. That uh, that is the hollow sections what we are going in for. Which reduce the cross-sectional size of the structural members, and uh, automatically the concrete materials has also been lowered. Thus, when compared to the solid sections, hollow ones can be considered as a very light urban and economical one. When you go into the utility services, we can use it for electrical, mechanical services, for water supply, sewage, air conditioner, dust, etc. It can be used for architectural ones too. So this is a uh, just two pics of the hollow beams, the conduct pipes which are passing through the beams. So now we are going into the SEC in hollow beams. As we have uh, taken up the hollow beams, we are going to go, go into the self compacting concrete. I think your slide is not visible. Your slide is not visible. 
one second. It's not visible to me, but to check up. Is it visible, sir? Now. It's a uh, from my side. It is in you are presenting only showing, sir. <laughs> okay, then proceed. Others, uh, uh, anyone is visible, sir? For everyone. One second. It was visible until before. Right now, it's not visible. One second. Again, I'll go. Go ahead. Is it now visible? Now is the visible, sir? Ah, uh, yes, yes, it is. Okay. Uh, just we are going into the self compacted concrete in hollow beams. Whenever there is an opening, uh, it has some uh, degrees. Uh, I, I feel you can uh, you can uh, go for your objectives and proceed with okay. the results. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, sir, you can you will get some interaction with us. Fine. Sir. This the is the self yes. Sure. This is a self compacting concrete. So, these are some introductions of SSC. Why we are using SSC? And the next slide is some addition of fibers. Which improves the tensile strength of the concrete. This is the performance of fibers what we are using. The synergy phenomenon, because we are using two or more fibers, it is called the synergy phenomenon and hybrid fibers. So these are some literature reviews which we have been taken up. And methodology, these are the materials what we have used. This is a micro steel fiber and this is a nylon fiber what we have taken up. These are the properties of the micro steel and nylon fibers. So it's designed based on AFNR standards. The requirement of SSC mainly three things we have to say up, which is our filling ability, passing ability, and segregation resistance. So based on workabilities, we have around eight, eight or nine tests. We have done the slump flow test, V funnel, and varying test. These are the results obtained of the workability test results. For all the three mixes, we will be finalizing one mix because there is no proper mix design for the compacting concrete. So this is the final mix design what we have attained as per EFNR standards after five or six trial mixes. So these are the ratio of the hybrid fibers what we have used. We have kept nylon as constant and we have varied the steel fibers from 0.1 to 0.4. So this we have done the fresh properties for each fiber ratio. We have taken up the slum test, T50, V funnel and Jerry. And this is a graph which shows from the graph we can attain this is 0 0.3 and 0 0.1 shows the higher value of the slum value and the Jerry test. So we have passed on to mechanical strength. These are the casting of uh, mechanical specimens. So when we based on the compressor strength, we can see for conventional concrete and compared to 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0.1 shows a higher value of compressor strength of 52 newton per inch per hour. 0.4 and 0 0.1, uh, it does not uh, satisfy the AFNR standards of the slump. The slump was very low, and it loses the flowable property. So based on this, there was 33.3 percentage uh, uh, higher than the conventional concrete for a 0 0.3, 0 0.1 which it was obtained. So these are the testing of cubes. Then we move on to based on the results obtained, we are going for the beam casting. This is the length, width, and overall depth, and uh, the reinforcement details of the beams. This is the cross-sectional area. These are the reinforcement what we have done. This is the form work. This are the battery. There's a mixing of fibers. We did it in the dry state. Then we have to do the slump test. Then there's the placing of concrete. This is the curing of beams. This is the lime coating. So these are the vessels of beam. The first track load. We can see for uh, compared to solid beams, it has been reduced. But for compared to conventional concrete and 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ratio, we can see the first track load was 28.5, which is higher when compared to the other load combinations. Similarly, for ultimate load capacity, also we can see the 105.8 is higher when compared to other fiber combinations. Similarly, for breaking load also. And we went when we compare the ductility, ductility also has increased from 9 to 10.33. The highest value has been obtained for is 0 0.3, 0 0.1 mix when compared to the even though the solid beam and other ratios too. So the, this is a load deflection curve of our various combination of fibers. So some theoretical calculation has also been done to have a still more clear effect. So here also for 0.3, 0.2 it shows a good variation of 1.25 percentage of ratio. So this uh, asking of beams. 
sorry testing of which is the facts obtained so our conclusion is after doing up the compressive stress and workability we have defined for 0.0.1 fibers as the optimum one so that we have been extended to the large scale problem that is we are casting a beam of 3 meters and we have been tested there also we have seen the 0.3.1 shows the best values and the activity was increased up to 14 percentage so these are the references Okay. Uh, yeah, please go to your first slide. Which slide, sir? First slide. Thank first you. Slide. Yes, sir. This is called oh, yes, sir. Ramam Brahm. Yes, sir. Okay. Another thing, you what you do, you should uh, focus on your tables and figures for your numbering, so that okay. if somebody want to refer, you should be able to refer. Here is yes. figure one A B. Okay, sir. And you should don't you should not mix up with your research and discussion and literature or the data experiment details. The experiment should be something different. The results should be different, and the results should be different, right? So this way okay. you should organize your presentation. Okay. Okay. So okay. what is your outcome of your work? What is that uh, you want to convey to the research community? So what we are conveying yeah. is when we are, yes, sir, convey. What is that your uh, your understanding? What is that you maybe after uh, this is scholar you have done some work on this how long you have uh, taken to uh, to get this work done? Uh, we have extended this work, sir. Experimental work has been completed. Okay, no, no uh, so after this work, uh, what yes, is that you understand from this work? What is that you wanted to suppose if somebody asks, uh, what is your uh, consolidation or observation? Yes, sir. That is what we are consolidating is wherever human being or the skilled laborers uh, find very difficult to uh, take up the concrete portions and the congested reinforcement. There we are using uh, self-compacting concrete, and there if there is any need of hollow beams for uh, any um, what to say for uh, water pipes or sewage pipes has to be casted in that areas. We are using the hollow beams also to improve the strength. As we are using hollow beams, we have uh, reduced the weight. To improve the strength, we are using the uh, combination of two fibers. So, for application oriented, we can say where the mass field to power or manpower are not able to access, there we can use this SEC with hollow beams. To improve the strength, we are using the fibers. What is the size of the Okay, okay Dada, thank you. Thank you very much, and wishing you the best for your research work. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Okay, you may call the next uh, center. Okay, okay, sir. Is Adik Setiani? No, is it audible? Okay, I'm ready to present about my presentation. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Can I get you my paper ID? Yeah, I think Satyani, what happened? You're okay. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry, I had trouble to entering when I'm opening my presentation. Yeah. Are you ready with your presentation? Are you ready with your presentation? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready to now? presenting. Yes. Carry your presentation. There is icon. Okay. Present now. At the bottom right. At the bottom right. Okay. Okay. Click it. Do you want to present or do you want to give oral presentation? If you have PPT, if you have PowerPoint, you can give a presentation. Otherwise, you can talk oral. What is your choice? Are you from Assam or Nepal? Sir, Indonesia, sir. Indonesia, Indonesia. She is from Indonesia. Huh? Yes, sir. Suggest, suggest something. 
if she's not in a position uh, to share let her, let her go with uh, uh, or ask the next well. person to present her. okay okay sir sure sir uh, miss adit yes ha uh, you are you do, no need to open your presentation you just to speak about your work you just to speak about your work is it is enough yeah, yes you just speak about your work first you tell your title and speak about your work okay the effect of i'm an addition uh, i had trouble entering when i'm opening my powerpoint share yes go ahead yes proceed yes present am i audible to you tetyani am i audible to you Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yeah, I'm speaking only. Audible to you, but to say the only. She's trying okay. to open anything. Okay, uh, I'm ready to presenting. Uh... has appear on the screen about my presentation sure ah oh, yeah sure please sorry. okay uh thank you very much for your time uh, let me introduce myself i'm at isiani uh today i'm presenting about my paper effect of nine week percent emanation on controlling and annealing behavior of ku 31 that and alive and This is my online about presentation. Uh, background, object, methodology, uh, and then result and discussion, conclusion, and the last reference. Uh, this is about my background about my paper. Uh, we know that catheters are used for variety of application that require high mechanical properties such as caliber ammunition, head exchange, and pipes. For small caliber ammunition is commonly fabricated using cartridges that contain 26 until 32 weak percent zinc due to its excellent properties such as seal, tank seal, and ductility, and then hardness. Research continues to be carried out in order to obtain a material that is stock and ductile, so that the deep drawing process does not been crack and tear. Okay, uh, materials for bullet cell are required to have high ductility and controllable recrystallization behavior to undergo the entire fabrication process. To optimization, the first is about improving its mechanical properties, and then uh, the second is studying the deformation and annealing mechanism of the material properties. One of the good solution is adding another element such as uh, MN to increase ductility, like uh, Ovat LL. A method to increase the ductility of cartridges is shown by adding manganese based on the research conductivity conducted by Ovat et al. Adding MN up to 5 weight percent increase the strength and ductility of this. But addition of more than 5 weight percent will lead to embrittlement. This was supported by Sori et al. who found that the addition of MN for 1.26 increase the strength and ductility. But Higher addition to 5.8 weight decrease the ductility due to presence of beta phase that block the dislocation movement. And then the object about my research. So this research was carried to understand the effect of MN addition to KU. 31 ZN investigation the effect of controlling with deformation, uh, 20, 40, and 70%. And then investigated the effect of annealing process with temperature on 30, 40, and 600. And this is my experimental method. This is flowchart 
of the research carry out the material casting by gravity casting method after casting sample homogeneous at 8052 hour and then rolling annealing and characterization and this is the result about my research uh, this is homogeneous microfot uh, figure for ku 29ZN and figure B for KU31ZN and 189MN. We'll see represent same ATS KU31ZN 9MN from this picture seen that. Uh, figure A, ku 9 alloy consists a large single equix alpha phase, but in the when I'm adding 90MN, uh, least two degrees of green size and formation of second phase in two different morphologies plate and irregular from ets analysis detected the matrix as alpha and second phase is beta and then the addition of nan mn caused the formation of beta phase and grain refinement which is caused hardness increase this is because of the addition of mn due to solid solution strengthening grain refinement and formation of second phase and then uh, next is microstructure of after uh, as homogeneous uh, give code rolling in the 20, 40, and 70 percent. In the 20 percent is lipid were observed in the alpha matrix. And then in 40 percent deformation further flattening the beta phase to alter the ratio of Slip lanes are more extensively for more and dislocation, make it from one slip plane to another and from cross slip. And then uh, shear pain, the increasing level of deformation to 70% resulted in a higher alberti ratio of the beta phase to 18 and formation to shear pain. The hardness of all alloy increased with higher level of deformation because strain hardening mechanism. And then, uh, after annealing in different temperature, uh, not much change in microstructure was detected after annealing and 3000. The matrix is full of hairband and the beta phase, second phase, remain flattening with all party ratio. And annealing at 1400 resulted in the diminishing of hairband and recrystallization. And new small equix grains start to form with the size of 5 millimeter and annealing at 60 hundreds for 30 minutes produce last large equix screen with the size of 40 millimeters some annealing twins with fray with a row in figure f and then uh, the effect annealing increase in annealing temperature uh, due to decrease in hardness due to stress relieving phenomena recovery recrystallization and gain growth and increasing the mn uh, content increase the temperature required for recrystallization to occur and then and then x-ray mapping of ku 3100 mn to ensure that there is no clustering in the second phase after the annealing process is perform a characterization x-ray mapping the results show that there is no clustering of certain atom which is indicated that the distribution of ku zinc and manganese element is evenly distributed and this is my conclusion addition of 90 weight m 2 gu 31 zn alloy increase the hardness due to solid solution strengthening grain refinement and formation of beta secondary phase into morphology split in irregular and then increased level of deformation led to thank increasing you. hardness thank you, to you to... Okay. Try to try to complete it quickly you are you are running short of time please try to finish quickly Yeah, complete quickly. Tetiani, complete quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Complete quickly. And this is my concord.
apa namanya itu Halo Cendel Thank you Satyani Thank you for your uh, presentation and your work Thank you, thank you very much Thank you very much Okay, thank you very much Halo Cendel Oh ya yes, Uh, how many other students are there? Other presenters? Well, yes, I am Are there any other students? Yes, sir. Are there any other students? 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 Are there இருக்கும் <laughs> ஆ தி பிரசன்டேஷன் இஸ் மேட் ஆ நோ வெரி இட்ஸ் குட் ஆ நல்லா பண்ணல பண்ணாங்க யூ ஆல்சோ காட் எஸ் 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 சோ தேர் இஸ் அனதர் நம்பர் எக்ஸ் எக்ஸ் சி ஜீரோ சவுண்ட் பாலா அதர் ஹீ இஸ் பிரசன்ட் ஆர் ஆல்ரெடி ஆல்ரெடி சார் செக் பண்ணுங்க சார் நோ ரெஸ் பிரசன்ட் மா பிரசன்ட் ஆர் ஜிபி இஸ் ஓ ஓகே Just keeping the students for the solution. Yeah. Sir, how are you, sir? How are you, sir? Uh, I am good, Raja Murugan. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? Sir, sir Raja, Raja Murugan, sir? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Do you have any questions, sir? Sir? No, sir. Do you have any questions, sir? Do you have any questions, sir? Yes, sir. Do you have any questions? நெட்வொர்க் கொஞ்சம் கம்மியா இருக்கா சார் ராஜபோக சார் நெட்வொர்க் யூஸ்டி கால் யூஸ்டி கால் சார் செஞ்சே சீரங்க ம் ஆ ஆமா எப்படி சார் இருக்கு இந்த வாட்டி அட்மிஷன் உங்களுக்கு ஓகே அட்மிஷன் எல்லாம் கேக்குது அதெல்லாம் கேக்குது கவர்மெண்ட் காலேஜ் கவர்மெண்ட் காலேஜ் ஃபுல் ஆயிடும் சார் ஆமா இல்ல இல்ல கவர்மெண்ட் காலேஜ் ஃபுல் ஆயிடும் ஃபீஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் ரொம்ப கம்மி இல்ல சார் ரொம்ப ரொம்ப கம்மி சார் ஏனா என்ட நிறைய கேண்டிடேட் கேட்டாங்க திருச்சி காரங்களும் கேட்டாங்க கரூர் காரங்களும் அப்ப நான் ஸ்ரீரங்கம் காலேஜ் ரெஃபர் பண்ணேன் சார் சரி சரி ஏனா நாங்க வந்து என்ன பண்ணோம் ஜெனரல் கவுன்சிலிங் கொடுப்போம் சார் எல்லாரும் ஓகே 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 ஏனா எந்த காலேஜ் சேரணும் என்ன இருக்கு என்ன ஃபெசிலிட்டி இருக்கும் கேப்போம் एक्चुअली எனக்கு அப்ப தெரியாது நீங்க அங்க ஒர்க் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கீங்க சார் ஏனா உங்களே ரெஃபர் பண்ண சொல்லிருக்கோம் ஓகே 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 ஓஹோ சரி சரி சார் அது மெக்கானிக்கல் சார் எல்லாம் நம்ம இது தர்மபுரியில இருந்தா இங்க ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் ஆகி இப்ப இங்க வந்து திருச்சி ஸ்டீரங்கம் ஆ மெக்கானிக்கல் மெக்கானிக்கல் ஆ பேப்பர்ஸ் அவ்வளவுதான் நினைக்கிறேன் சார் ஏ பாலா ஆ ஓகே சார் சிக்னல் கொஞ்சம் போரா இருக்கு இங்க கொஞ்சம் இப்ப இது வரைக்கும் நாலு பேர் பிரசன்ட் பண்ணிருக்காங்க சார் ஆமா சார் ஆமா நாலு பேர் சார் ஆ எஸ் சார் எஸ் சார் சார் நாலு பேர் பிரசன்ட் பண்ணிருக்காங்களா சார் நாலு பேர் தான் சார் 
ஆமா சார் நாலு பேர் பிரசன் பண்ணிருக்காங்களா பாலச்சந்திர சார் ஓகே சார் நாலு பேர் தான் சார் முடிச்சிருக்காங்க நாலு பேர் சார் நம்ம இதுல இருந்து ஏதாவது ஒரு டெஸ்ட் பேப்பர் ஏதாவது ஓகே சார் சார் செல்வி எந்த செஷன் சார் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ஸ் uh please i uh, uh, enroll you or a feedback in the given uh, thank you uh, id to get the participation certificate uh, once again thank you all thank you sir yeah it is a pleasure to thank uh, you guys the presenters authors mrs scholars and the opportunity given to us so we thank sincerely uh health department principal thank you for coming sir thank you management thank you very much thank you guys so much so shall we take leave uh, yes yes sir so thank you thank you sir thank you sir rajesh program sir thank you sir okay okay thank you all to the participants thank you sir uh, uh, and uh, say that me your payment has received uh, we'll uh, proceed your uh, publication right say that can you hear us can you hear us say that you, you have to unmute okay fine your payment received and we will proceed your publication everybody so thank you all பாலச்சந்தர் சார் பழனிகுமார் சார் ஃபார் கிவிங் மீ தப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி So can we leave the meeting right now? Oh, okay, ma'am. Thank you, sir. அதித் சத்யானி மேம்
अनुराधा सिरा मैम 